In this video, I'm gonna share easy, no cost ways that you can really connect with nature every day. I don't want you to think that you need to save up tons of money, plan an elaborate trip, live out of a van, buy a bunch of gear in order for you to actually get outside and experience the benefits of nature. So this video is really focused in on those simple, easy and fun activities that you can do outside just about every single day to experience the many benefits of being outdoors. First up is very simply walking outdoors. This is one of my favorite activities. This could be around your neighborhood, around a local park. It does not have to be complicated. Six months ago, I decided I'm going to try to do 10K steps a day, and I do most of those steps outdoors every day. Now, the reason I started this is because I actually spend a lot of time indoors on my computer working. While I do go camping a lot and I do go on hikes a lot, I also run a business and I make all of these videos and I have other products and all that takes a lot of time on the computer sitting at home. And so I started to realize that on the days that I was working at home, I just wasn't getting outside very much. I wasn't very active other than maybe going to the gym and lifting weights. So I just thought I want to start walking more outdoors and really just experience the benefits of nature easily on the days that I'm working. So this can look like a lot of different things depending on where you're at and what you have going on in life. It could be maybe trying to get out for two walks a day or maybe you try to go out on a walk on your lunch break every day or you do something like I do and I try to do my 10k steps every day. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing but I think getting outside and walking is so beneficial. You get sunshine and that good old vitamin D. It can completely change your mood. I know for me, if I am stressed or if I'm frustrated or stuck on something, I go out for a walk and I pretty much always come back feeling less stressed, happier. I come up with creative ideas. I solve problems. Nick and I are so used to getting out for walks in the morning. We go out for a walk after dinner, during lunch, and it's just become a, such a normal part of our day that it's something I really look forward to. And it doesn't require any fancy gear or driving to, into the mountains and getting on the trails. It's really something that you can do at your local park or just around your neighborhood at home. Number two on my list is to download the Seek app on your phone. So it is a free app. They might have a paid version, but I've never paid for it. And this app is so cool because you can use it to identify plants and animals that you see when you're out on your walks. <laughs> so if you are walking around the neighborhood, it's so fun to have this app because if you see cool plants along the sidewalk or animals, you basically hover your camera over that plant or that animal and it will identify it. And then you can take a photo and keep it in your library if you want to refer to it later. And it will also give you tons of information about that plant or that animal. So it's a great way to learn on the go and to learn about some of the plants that you might see every single day. So this is Russian sage, and it definitely smells like sage, plus it has a bit of a lavender smell to me as well. There's a lot of bees around it. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is grapes. Wow. Grape vines. That is so cool. I, I walk along here all the time. I've actually never noticed the grapevine or the grapes. <laughs> That's really cool. All right. The cool thing is the app even works if you don't have cell service. So I'll use this on my hikes as well and it will identify things, but it just won't give you a lot of info. You'll have to wait until you get serviced again to get some more info about the plant or animal. But I've been able to use this app to learn about all sorts of plants and animals that I see pretty regularly. And it's a lot of fun on your walks to also learn some things and collect some cool photos of the things that you see often. The next activity is rock counting. Rock counting is the activity of searching for and collecting rocks, fossils, and 
minerals. It's important to note that there can be some local rules and regulations when it comes to rock hounding, so make sure you check on that beforehand. But rock hounding has quickly become one of my favorite outdoor activities. I live in Utah, which is one of the best states for rock hounding, so that's sort of how I got into this. But you honestly don't really need to be looking for like these prized geodes and crystals to enjoy rock hounding. This is something that I just like to do even along the river or the stream. There are a lot of really cool rocks, and you might not know exactly what they are, but it's really fun to look and really just observe and appreciate how cool and diverse some of the rocks are. So it's a lot of fun and you don't even need to keep any of the things that you collect. It really can just be an activity where you sit along the river, enjoy the sounds, enjoy, enjoy just being outside in nature and looking at the rocks. If you want to, it's also a great way to learn about the geology of the area and some of the rocks and the formations over time that have created the crystals or the fossils in the area. So it's really cool. You can really dive as deep as you want into it or keep it really simple. Just a few weeks ago, I took my dad on a trip and we spent hours along the river looking for rocks. We had nothing in particular that we were looking for. It just was really fun to watch how excited and into it he got. And even my dad was just so surprised at how much fun and how addicting it was just to find what we thought were cool rocks. And then we'd pick something up and I'd be like, dad, look at this one, look at this one. And he'd show me some of the ones that he found. So it's just really fun, it's simple, and it's something that you can just enjoy being outside, noticing more of these details of the landscape and of the ground that you probably just walk right on by. The next way to easily connect with nature is to simply take your shoes off. <laughs> this is sometimes called grounding, where you just have your bare feet connected to the earth. There are a couple different ways you can do this. You can walk barefoot in your backyard, over your lawn, you can go to your local park, even walking barefoot on the beach are all great ways to feel your feet on the earth. There actually have been a lot of studies showing the benefits of grounding yourself or walking barefoot. I will link to some of these studies in the description below. One of the things that I've noticed about walking barefoot is that it really requires me to be in the present moment, to be noticing what's around me and what I'm stepping on. It also just kind of feels good. It's kind of like a little massage for your feet. And so I, I try to walk barefoot very often. It built up my feet so that they're kind of tough to be able to walk barefoot. My final way to really connect with nature is to sit wherever you want outside, close your eyes and take a few full belly deep breaths. So you close your eyes and start to become aware of the sounds that are furthest from you. And you'll often hear trees or wind. You can maybe feel the wind on your skin, the sun on your face and how it warms up your body. And maybe you hear a, a bird in the distance and here I hear the river and I can hear the wind rustling through the trees gently. And begin to kind of notice those sounds that are furthest from you. And then start to bring it in. So notice the sounds that are closer and closer and closer eventually until you start to become really aware of your breath and that rhythmic inhale and exhale and just let the body relax. And I even like to say the word relax or the word release, just kind of releasing any of that tension in the body and breathing in that fresh air, feeling that sunshine. This is something that's so incredibly simple to do, like many of the things on this list. And it's a great way to become present, to release any of that stress, and really just come back to a place of center before you continue on with your day. In our modern, fast-paced societies where everyone is really glued to their screens and their computers, I just wanna leave you with this. You were meant to be in nature. And so I hope these ideas, while they are so simple, that is the point. I hope that they are things that you really can try to implement into your life every day to connect with nature more and really experience the benefits of being outside. I believe that my physical and mental health is really connected to nature and setting the intention to get outside every single day I think really does make me a happier, more productive 
person throughout the day. So I challenge you to maybe implement one or some of these things on this list into your day. Maybe instead of just mindlessly scrolling on Instagram when you're bored or you have a few minutes in between activities, step outside and take a deep breath. It really can be that simple. So I'd love to know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite ways that you simply enjoy and connect with nature? And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I got tons more outdoor videos and I would love to see you in the next one.